Chapter 19, The Influence of Christian Women Wonderful Mission of Women Seventh-day Adventists are not in any way to be little woman's work. Gospel Workers, page 453. Wonderful is the mission of the wives and mothers and the younger women workers. If they will, they can exert an influence for good to all around them. By modesty in dress and circumspect deportment, they may bear witness to the truth in its simplicity. They may let their light so shine before all that others will see their good works and glorify their Father which is in heaven. A truly converted woman will exert a powerful transforming influence for good. Connected with her husband, she may aid him in his work and become the means of encouragement and blessing to him. When the will and way are brought into subjection to the Spirit of God, there is no limit to the good that can be accomplished. Manuscript 91, 1908 To act a part in the closing work Our sisters, the youth, the middle-aged, and those of advanced years may act a part in the closing work of this time. And in doing this, as they have opportunity, they will obtain an experience of the highest value to themselves. In forgetfulness of self, they will grow in grace. By training the mind in this direction, they will learn how to bear burdens for Jesus. Review and Herald, January 2, 1879. To serve with faithfulness and discernment. At this time, every talent of every worker should be regarded as a sacred trust to be used in extending the work of reform. The Lord instructed me that our sisters, who have received a training that has fitted them for positions of responsibility, are to serve with faithfulness and discernment in their calling, using their influence wisely, and with their brethren in the faith, obtaining an experience that will fit them for still greater usefulness. In ancient times, the Lord worked in a wonderful way through consecrated women who united in His work with men whom He had chosen to stand as His representatives. He used women to gain great and decisive victories. More than once, in times of emergency, He brought them to the front and worked through them for the salvation of many lives. Letter B. 22, 1911 the mother's first responsibility. The mother's influence never ceases. It is ever active, either for good or for evil. And if she would have her work abide the test of the judgment, she must make God her trust and labor with an eye single to his glory. Her first duty is to her children, to so mold their characters that they may be happy in this life and secure the future immortal life. She should not be influenced by what Mrs. So-and-so does, nor by the remarks of Mrs. A or B, in reference to her being so odd, so different from other people in her dress, or in the arrangement of her house for comfort, rather than display, or in the management of her children. God has given the mother, in the education of her children, a responsibility paramount to everything else. Good Health, June 1880 Society has claims upon women. It is a woman's right to look after the interest of her husband, to have a care for his wardrobe and to seek to make him happy. It is her right to improve her mind and manners, to be social, cheerful, and happy, shedding sunshine in her family and making it a little heaven. And she may have an interest for more than me and mine. She should consider that society has claims upon her. The health reformer, June 1873. A work outside our homes. Men and women are not fulfilling the design of God when they simply express affection for their own family circle, for their rich relatives and friends, while they exclude those from their love whom they could comfort and bless by relieving their necessities. When the Lord bids us do good for others outside our home, He does not mean that our affection for home shall become diminished and that we shall love our kindred or our country less, because he desires us to extend our sympathies. But we are not to confine our affection and sympathy within four walls and enclose the blessing that God has given us, so that others will not be benefited with us in its enjoyment. 
Review and Herald, October 15, 1895. Enlarging the Sphere of Usefulness All have not the same work. There are distinct and individual duties for each to perform. Yet with these varied duties there may be a beautiful harmony, binding the work of all together in perfect fitness. Our Heavenly Father requires of none to whom He has given but one talent, the improvement of five. But if the one be wisely used, the possessor will soon have gained more and may continually increase his power of influence and sphere of usefulness by making the best use of the talents which God has given her. Her individuality may be distinctly preserved, and yet she be part of the great whole in advancing the work of reform so greatly needed. Woman, if she wisely improves her time and her faculties, relying upon God for wisdom and strength, may stand on an equality with her husband as adviser, counselor, companion, and co-worker, and yet lose none of her womanly grace or modesty. She may elevate her own character, and just as she does this, she is elevating and ennobling the characters of her family and exerting a powerful, though unconscious, influence upon others around her. Good Health, June 1880 Learning to Reach Other Women with the Truth Women can learn what needs to be done to reach other women. There are women who are especially adapted for the work of giving Bible readings, and they are very successful in presenting the Word of God in its simplicity to others. They become a great blessing in reaching mothers and their daughters. This is a sacred work, and those engaged in it should receive encouragement. Letter 108, 1910 Responsibility to Gather Sheaves Let every sister who claims to be a child of God feel a responsibility to help all within her reach. The noblest of all attainments can be gained through practical self-denial and benevolence for others' good. Sisters, God calls you to work in the harvest field and to help gather in the sheaves. In the various lines of home missionary work, the modest, intelligent woman may use her powers to the very highest account. Review and Herald, December 10, 1914. An Influence on the Side of Reform and Truth Why should not women cultivate the intellect? Why should they not answer the purpose of God in their existence? Why may they not understand their own powers and realizing that these powers are given to God of God strive to make use of them to the fullest extent in doing good to others an influence on the side of reform and truth why should not women cultivate the intellect why should they not answer the purpose of God in their existence why may they not understand their own powers and realizing that these powers are given of God Strive to make use of them to the fullest extent in doing good to others, in advancing the work of reform, of truth, and of real goodness in the world. Satan knows that women have a power of influence for good or for evil. Therefore, he seeks to enlist them in his cause. He invents multitudinous fashions and tempts the women of the present day as he did Eve to pluck and eat to adopt and practice these ever-changing, never-satisfying modes. Sisters and mothers, we have a higher aim, a more noble work than to study the latest fashion and form garments with needles adorning to meet the standard of this modern Moloch. We may become its slave and sacrifice upon its altars our own and the present and future happiness of our children. But what do we gain in the end? We have sown to the flesh, we shall reap corruption. Our works cannot bear the inspection of God. We shall see at last how many souls might have been blessed and redeemed from darkness and error by our influence, which instead encouraged them in pride and outward display to the neglect of the inward adorning. Good Health, June 1880 Placing Leaven of God's Word in Home Women, as well as men, can engage in the work of hiding the truth, where it can work out and be made manifest. Discreet and humble women can do a good work in explaining the truth to the people in their homes. The Word of God thus explained will begin its leavening work, and through its influence whole families will be converted to the truth. 
Letter 86, 1907. Do not become weary in missionary service. My sisters, do not become weary in the distribution of our literature. This is a work you may all engage in successfully, if you are but connected with God. Before approaching your friends and neighbors or writing letters of inquiry, lift the heart to God in prayer. All who with humble heart take part in this work will be educating themselves as acceptable workers in the vineyard of the Lord. Review and Herald, December 10, 1914. Women can reach hearts. To these, our friends who expect soon to go from us to other lands, I wish to say, remember that you can break down the severest opposition by taking a personal interest in the people whom you meet. Christ took a personal interest in the men and women while he lived on this earth. Wherever he went, he was a medical missionary. We are to go about doing good even as he did. We are instructed to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and comfort the sorrowing. The sisters can do much to reach the heart and make it tender. Wherever you are, my sisters, work in simplicity. If you are in a home where there are children, show an interest in them. Let them see that you love them. If one is sick, offer to give him treatment. Help the careworn, anxious mother to relieve her suffering child. Review and Herald, November 11, 1902. To unite with other women in temperance work. The Woman's Christian Temperance Union is an organization with whose efforts for the spread of the temperance principles we can heartily unite. The light has been given me that we are not to stand aloof from them. But while there is to be no sacrifice of principle on our part, as far as possible we are to unite with them in laboring for temperance reforms. We are to work with them when we can, and we can assuredly do this on the question of utterly closing the saloon. As the human agent submits his will to the will of God, the Holy Spirit will make the impression upon the hearts of those to whom he ministers. I have been shown that we are not to shun the WCTU workers. By uniting with them in behalf of total abstinence, we, are, we do not change our position regarding the observance of the seventh day, and we can show our appreciation of their position regarding the subject of temperance. By opening the door and inviting them to unite with us on the temperance question, we secure their help among temperance lines. And they, by uniting with us, will hear new truths which the Holy Spirit is waiting to oppress upon their hearts. Review and Herald, June 18, 1908. Surprised at our indifference. I have had some opportunity to see the great advantage to be gained by connecting with the WCTU workers, and I have been much surprised as I have seen the indifference of many of our leaders to this organization. I call on my brethren to awake. Letter 274, 1907. Appreciate the good done by WCTU. Light has been given me that there are those with most precious talents and capabilities in the WCTU. Much time and money has been absorbed among us in ways that bring no returns. Instead of this, some of our best talents should be set at work for the WCTU, not as evangelists, but as those who fully appreciate the good that has been done by this body. We should seek to gain the confidence of the workers in the WCTU by harmonizing with them as far as possible. This people have been rich in good works. Manuscript 91, 1907. A Telling Influence, Counsel to a Sister I hope, my sister, that you will have an influence in the woman's Christian temperance union. Get the oil of grace in the conscious and unconscious influence of words spoken, revealing the fact that you have the light of life to shine forth to others in a direct, positive testimony upon subjects which you can all agree, and this will leave a telling influence. My heart is with your heart in this work of temperance. I speak upon this subject most decidedly, and it has a decided influence upon other minds. Manuscript 74, 1898 Doing Missionary Work Without Neglecting Home Duties 
Intelligent Christian women may use their talents to the very highest account. They can show by their life of self-denial and by their willingness to work to the best of their ability that they believe the truth and are being sanctified through it. Many need a work of this kind to develop the powers they possess. Wives and mothers should in no case neglect their husbands and their children, but they can do much without neglecting home duties, and all have not these responsibilities. Who can have so deep a love for the souls of men and women for whom Christ died as those who are partakers of His grace? Who can better represent the religion of Christ than Christian women, women who are earnestly laboring to bring souls to the light of the truth? Who else is so well adapted to the work of the Sabbath school? The true mother is the true teacher of children. If, with a heart imbued with the love of Christ, she teaches the children of her class, praying with them and for them, she may see souls converted and gathered into the fold of Christ. I do not recommend that women should seek to become a voter or office holder, but as a missionary teaching the truth by epistolary correspondence, distributing reading matter, conversing with families, and praying with the mother and children, she may do much and be a blessing. Signs of the Times, September 16, 1886 Women Not Excused Because of Domestic Cares Some can do more than others, but all can do something. Women should not feel that they are excused because of their domestic cares. They should become intelligent as to how they can work most successfully and methodically in bringing souls to Christ. If all would realize the importance of doing to the utmost of their ability in the work of God, having a deep love for souls, feeling the burden of the work upon them, hundreds would be engaged as active workers who have hitherto been dull and uninterested, accomplishing nothing, or at most very little. In many cases, the rubbish of the world has clogged the channels of the soul. Selfishness controls the mind and warps the character. Were the life hid with Christ in God, His service would be no drudgery. If the whole heart were consecrated to God, all would find something to do and would covet a part in the work. They would sow beside all waters, praying and believing that the fruit would appear. The practical, God-fearing workers will be growing upward, praying in faith for grace and heavenly wisdom that they may do the work, devolving upon them with cheerfulness and a willing mind. They will seek the divine rays of light that they may brighten the paths of others. Signs of the Times, September 16, 1886 The Beautiful Character Molding Resolution let every individual member of the church ask himself, What part can I act to win a soul to Jesus Christ? I will, says one class, guard myself that my want shall be so bound about that no needless adornment shall steal away the pence and shillings to gratify pride or display. I will consecrate myself to God and my desire for selfish gratification shall be killed before it buds and blossoms and bears fruit. This is a good resolution. It will please the Savior who has purchased you. One may say, I have no opportunity to obtain money, but I will set apart myself. I will educate and train myself that no opportunity shall be allowed to pass unimproved. And I have always kept myself busy. But after all, I have not felt a satisfaction in the way my time has been occupied. I see now as never before that very much of my time has been employed in doing nothing but those things that pleased myself. Now I desire to please God, and I will give a portion of my time in doing real service for the Master. I will visit the sick. I will train myself to have an interest and sympathy for the suffering ones. And I will add, if possible, some favors to make them more comfortable. Through this means I can reach their hearts and speak a word as the servant of Jesus Christ. Thus I can cultivate the art of ministering and may win souls to Jesus. Can you not see that Jesus will say, Well done, to this line of ministry? Letter 12, 1892